Good morning everybody. Come back here. Quite a misty morning today, a bit greasy, but um, yeah, not bad, not bad, a bit cold. I've got my liner in my jacket now. Did a video the other day saying about my uh, heated vest and how I thought there might be a problem with it and I've had it confirmed by Case that there is a problem with it, so it's gone back. So I'm having to rely on layering. So a uh, little bit nippy, about two degrees C. You know, I was out the other day on my, um, my last ride of the season on the Z1000. That one's now in the middle of being tucked up in bed, getting all cleaned up. And um, I saw a sign, and it was a sign like that little brown one there. And uh, it had a name on it, Julian's Bower. And I didn't have a clue what that was. But I was on my way back, back home, and I didn't have a chance to check it out. So I looked it up on that there internet. It's amazing, that there internet. Well worth a look, I think it might catch on. And um, it was quite neat, quite cool. So I thought, I'm going to go and have a look at that, see what state it's in. And Julian's Bower is not the name of the thing I'm going to look at. It's the name of the type of thing that I'm going to look at. So it sounds like it's a specific instance, but it's actually the name given to a particular type of maze or labyrinth. A Julian's Bower. And this is the last Julian's Bower that exists in the UK. Although there are many other things that go under similar names, or slightly different names, I should say but are very similar things. This is a turf cut maze. So it's a circle, about 13 and a half, 14 metres across, which, what's that, about 45 feet, something like that, with a labyrinth cut into it, that actually, if you follow it, if you walk around it, which, assuming that it's not too wet, because I don't want to damage it, so it's cut into the turf, but, um, if you walk around it, it's about a quarter of a mile long to walk around, even though it's inside such a small circle. So I thought what I'll do is I'll go and have a look at it, walk around it, and while I'm walking around it, or probably just after I'm walking around it, I shall talk about the little bits I do know about it, and the things that may be true about it, because nobody actually knows who put it there, for sure. There are a few theories, but nobody's got proof. So, when I get there, I shall show you it. Oh! <laughs> Gone past it. I just noticed something then. This is Alkborough. I think it's pronounced Alkborough that I'm coming into, which is where the Julian's Bower is. And I guess they're proud of it. Because here's the sign into Alkborough. And there's the maze. Obviously, a smaller version of. So at least I know I'm in the right place. So it must be down here. See what state it's in. Hopefully not too muddy. It's a bit of mud there, but the grass is okay. Making my feet a bit wet, but not sloppy mud. Informational sign there. I'll have a look at that in a bit. Bit of a beacon of some sort. And the view out over the flats towards the river. Now that's quite impressive, but of course the reason I'm here is this thing. This is the turf maze. So what can I tell you about it? Well, it's a labyrinth, which I believe technically means there's only one way in, which is this. And obviously you then have to follow the path. There's only one path on this one. It's a bit hard to make out from here, but I guess once you're down there it'll be easy. But you have to follow it all round, all over the place until you get to the middle part there where that patch is, where I guess people have stood and spun round and worn the grass away. See, it's in quite a... You see it's in quite a dip. I'd say that's probably about two feet deep. And uh, one theory is that the Romans actually dug it originally. And then later on it was carved out by Christians because it's a very Christian shape. It's 11 concentric circles 
and a route from the edge to the centre. And the whole thing's kind of cross-like. So all of the ways that you can go in and out uh, on the four points of the cross, there's nothing kind of diagonal cutting in. You've got to go round to the next cross point and work your way back and forth until you get to the middle. So it's a very Christian design. The design's actually identical to the floor of the cathedral in Chartres, about 50 miles outside of Paris, um, which is a cathedral that was built, I think, in the 12th and 13th centuries, so pretty old. But then this thing is allegedly very old as well. So this goes back to the 1200s. So, you know, a good seven, 800 years old. Obviously, it's been worked upon a quite a lot, which is the other theory for why it's so deep, is that actually it's just been walked on, played on, used for so many centuries. And in that time it's sunk and it's had to be reworked, cleaned out, recut and so on for so long that um, that that kind of refurbishment has meant that it gets lower and lower as it goes along. The, um, the idea of the one in Chartres, not necessarily the one here, is that pilgrims would go to the cathedral, Roman Catholic pilgrims, and they would actually do the whole thing on the knees. Now this one, I say, is about 13 and a half metres across. And the route to the centre is not too far off a quarter of a mile, allegedly, just because you're going up and down these things so often. The one at Chartres Cathedral is much, much bigger. It's the floor of the cathedral. It's made of stone. So doing all that on your knees, I guess, would uh, teach you to sin. But it supposedly gets you forgiveness for your sins. So, you know. Another theory is that this had nothing to do with Romans at all. And it was cut in the 1200s by somebody who was doing penance for um, being involved in the murder of Thomas Becket. But then the theory that's the main one is actually it was cut as a religious thing, again in the 1200s, by a set of monks that were local to the area. And then it's been say, played on ever since. So I suppose only one thing to do now really is uh, have a walk around it. So I think shall have a walk around and uh, enjoy a quarter of a mile walk to the middle. And maybe make it to a half a mile by walking back out again. <laughs> I'm at the middle. Let's go back. It's very, very twisty. You think, you think you're almost there. Ah, uh, but you know. I think I shall get out of here and then I'll have to go and find the local church. Um, not for a Suffolk Andy, but the local church apparently has uh, this design cut into the porch in the floor. It's supposed to be really, really, really tiny people to do the penance. The maze now is looked after by volunteers. So it was completely refurbished in 2007. Apparently it took three months. So the whole thing closed off to the public for three months to refurbish it and make it all lovely. Put in hard wearing grass so that people could carry on enjoying it um, and then there's a set of volunteers who keep it maintained afterwards and considering we're now pretty much into winter um, and it's had 
10 years, well, 11 years of use since that refurbishment. They're obviously doing a decent job keeping it up to scratch. Morning. Pardon? <laughs> I have no idea what he said. Because I've got ear plugs in still. <laughs> this is the twisty bit. And we're done. There's my exercise for the day. Well, I thought before I leave, I'll just head down to this church here, do a bit of a Suffolk candy. Uh, only because the, apparently, oh, got this side to not block the road. Apparently the porch has the map of the labyrinth in its uh, floor. So I thought I'd just have a look. Let's have a look-see. I guess it would come in very handy having that when you want to maintain a seven or eight hundred year old labyrinth that's made out of grass. Because I guess the grass one would easily be destroyed but the stone one will give you a map to recreate it from. I don't know if they actually did that or not but it certainly seems like it would work. So let's have a look. Weird stone there. Oh, there you go. Is that some map of the maze? Now you might ask why I'm in a cemetery. I'm not trying to come up with a new thing, a new <laughs> suffragandi or net or anything. But I do believe that in here is a cross that also has the maze on. It's not that one. But I think this might be the last reference to the uh, Julian's Bower that I saw on the uh, internet. Let's see if I can find it. I think I can see it. There you have it. It's nicely done, isn't it? Quite a... Rustic isn't the word, but I guess you'll know what I mean. Roughly carved sto stone for the cross itself. But then... Um, very nicely carved into it, the labyrinth. James Coulton Constable, 1850 to 1922. So they're never going to lose the design. Well, from this sombre place. So thank you for watching everyone. Ride safe. Hope you enjoyed that little trip. And I'll talk to you all again soon.